said, told you that if you ever find yourself on a desert island and you only have one movie left, uh, that, you know, you can request. <laughs> There's, it comes floating up on shore. It's, watch, make sure you watch, for those of you, since we only have so many nights a week, make sure you watch Solaris with George Clooney. And this movie, I mean, Solaris is, solar is, is really light is, which is really a way of saying God is. That's really what wow. the movie's about. And then just give you a brief thing, it's like the, the law of what, as you sow, so shall you reap, and karma, and what you give is what you get. It's basically, as you get close to this planet Solaris, then all of your thoughts become manifest. So, in, like on Earth time, everything is kind of slow. Everything keeps coming around again, like the Carly Simon song, but it seems to take a lot of time. And it can seem to take a long time. But these patterns repeat in very slow ways. You get to face these same patterns over and over very slowly. With Solaris, everything speeds up. And so, the George Clooney character, which is interesting, his name is Chris, which is one letter short of Christ, has got to go through his ultimate forgiveness lesson and learn how to forgive the whole cosmos, and he does. And then his his wife, who had committed suicide, and he's going to have all these lessons with um, after she committed suicide. Her name is Rhea, which is one letter short of real. So we have Chris and Rhea, Christ and real, coming together. And that's why I always say if you're on a deserted island and the ego's torturing you, uh, you, and you get your one request, like one phone call, take this movie and use it for your awakening, because it's quite powerful. Another movie that was coming to mind that's funny and deep and uh, profound is one called Fifty First Dates. If you really want to see a movie, it's really good. They had even If you get the DVD, please watch the extras. They had so much fun making it. They were just in the happy dream, in the miracle moment, the whole while they were making it. Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, and the, the producers, the directors, everybody was like totally in love with each other. And the outtakes are just as hilarious as the movie, because they're just so inspired. And it's in Hawaii, it's shot in Hawaii, and, and they have such a ball making it. But it's like, it's using this amnesia thing. Drew has amnesia because of a car accident, okay, we've all gone through the amnesia thing with God, and so it's a memory problem, and yet it's a love story. It's breaking through amnesia to find a way to connect, and, and Adam Sandler tries everything to break through. It's really good. It's a funny movie, but it's also very profound, because we have a memory problem. We're, we are repeating the past, over and over, every day, kind of like Groundhog Day, and she's repeating, reliving the same day over, and yet, with the Spirit's help, he finds a way to break through this loop, and, and actually, even though she cannot remember anything from, uh, from the previous day, it just kind of loops and loops and loops, she, he's able to break through and join, it just takes it all the way through to, it's a great, great love story. Uh, another one that I really love, I showed this movie in not, a lot of places around the world, but I've shown it over in Mallorca when I did these four week and six week uh, retreats. That's a lot of fun too. If you ever get a chance, do a six week retreat with me. There's so lots of movies. I won't have to be telling you movies at the end. <laughs> we'll watch them all. But uh, it was called Frequency. And it's a transcend time love story of a father and son, interestingly, who, who are different generations that actually come together as kind of a murder mystery, and it's got quantum in it, at the end it goes totally quantum, and it goes booming, blasting through to the happy dream, and, and they're able, through, through their determination to communicate, and even though it's transgenerational communication, they literally, all of time and space is rearranged. Uh, for them, and it transcends death, 
and it comes really quantum all the way to this beautiful scene at the end of just a, it's a little baseball scene, but it's just a happy dream with all kinds of slow motion joy and happiness. So I wanted to, to mention those. Um, I also wanted to mention um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Uh, we have two people who have, who fall in love and who all of a sudden after they fall in love, surprise, surprise, all of their grievances and their conditioning starts to surface uh, in the love relationship because it just starts to come up and all of their judgments are there and they start getting projected and it gets, it gets difficult. So basically they choose to have this procedure where they go into, first uh, Kate Winslet goes in and, and has her memory erased of, of him. <laughs> How's that for dealing with, with hurt and pain? She just goes in for a memory erasure procedure and basically, you know, erases him and then he is so hurt by that that she would erase him from her memory. But he goes in for the same procedure and to get her completely erased. Like, okay, if you're going to do that, I'm going I'm to do it too. And then at some point during the erasure procedure, he starts to feel this deep love for her uh, that he doesn't want her erased <laughs> at some point. But the erasure has begun and so he is taking her hand and they're running through his consciousness trying to run and hide in other memories in his mind <laughs> so that the great eraser doesn't uh, come and erase him. But in the end it's so beautiful because one by one the memories all get erased and, and finally at the very end uh, you know, she's like saying, okay this is it Joel, this is our, our last memory. What, you know, what, what are you going to do? And he just, he kind of kicks back on the beach and he says, just enjoy it. And in one sense, the Holy Spirit is the great eraser. Taking it, erasing all these false memories and all these associations we had in time and, and erasing them from our mind so that we can come back to the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, which is our divine mind. No memories of time and space, no memories of relationships gone wrong and hurts and pains and grievances, just, it's like, in the end, uh, we were talking about that today, John Mark and I, about this memory starts to go, uh, my grandmother, she got lived to be 99 and we had such a great relationship and the further she got along in her 90s, uh, what the world would call Alzheimer's uh, kicked in. I always tell people that you're going to go through some form of spiritual Alzheimer's anyway uh, as this erasure begins and always you'll just remember in the end what you what's in it what's important to remember which is God <laughs> everything else gets erased your memory totally was misused you know Jesus even says in the course that memory was an ability that was invented after the fall there's no memory there's no recall in eternity, because it's all pure oneness. So, so the Holy Spirit uses memory, the, the holy instant, so that in the end we just remember the holiness and perception is selective. We forget everything else. We come into our happy dream and then finally the reverse amnesia occurs where we forget the world and we remember God, which reverses the whole amnesia process. So, if you get a chance, please, please, please watch Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Another classic one in the Movie Watcher's Guide. However, the movie I've chosen for you tonight has got it all. It is such a well-made movie that I just, I love seeing a masterpiece. And one where it's like, the Holy Spirit just is like, just sit back and smile. This one hardly needs any commentary. It's so well-made. I think it's, in terms of recent movies over the last 15 or 20 years, I just, I cannot recommend this movie enough. Uh, yes, The Course in Miracles is a path of awakening. Yes, it has a perennial wisdom, but what makes it a little bit unique from other perennial wisdoms is the emphasis on relationships and the use of relationships to wake up. 
You know, it's really a pathway of relationships. And this movie is first and foremost a relationship movie. It is a love story. We've been watching movies all week about transcending the belief and the experience of linear time. This movie hits the home run with that. Love story, relationship movie, undoing linear time, forgiveness, letting go of expectations, and even transcending death. It's got it all. I just, it's seamlessly made. I won't even have to probably click this on and off because it's just, we'll just come, we'll be sucked in and carried through and lifted up. I mean, the feeling I get at the end of this movie is this bursting joy of how deep love is, how time could never keep us apart, how relationships are destined to be holy and destined to be freed up from the need for bodies to be present even. I mean, that's, that's really deep when you think of it. You know, Jesus says, you know, you can't even think of God without a body. And think of it throughout history, you know, when they tried to, you know, paint Sistine Chapel and, and all these <coughs> paintings of God. Is it like God's an old man with a white beard? You know, even these concepts of God involve the body. And this movie goes and really hits the home run at taking us into an experience of a love that transcends bodies, that transcends bodies together. And it's done so, so well. So, sit back and enjoy Time Traveler's Wife.